a friend of mine in Illinois actually knows a teacher that comes to uh, school as a furry and wears ears and a tail and uses a litter box at the front of the classroom to relieve himself. This is so ridiculous at this point. This, guy, this is Andrew Womack, if you're unfamiliar with him. God, dude, he's just like detached from reality with some of the stuff he says. How could anybody possibly, honestly believe that a teacher wears a tail and ears to class and uses a litter box at the front of the classroom? Who could possibly believe this? Well, as it turns out, there are some clips that I haven't played from Andrew Womack because they would get me banned if I did. But I can play them now. So I want to talk about some of the ridiculous, stupid stuff Andrew Womack said. The reason I couldn't play them before is because they're just flat-out, bald-faced lies from uh, about COVID, basically, and about uh, you know other pandemics and stuff. He also has some absolutely backward stuff about trans people, although that one's not banned. Um, I have another one that's from John MacArthur that's banned. But yeah, let's listen to the banned clips from this guy, shall we? Before we do, let me just give you a little bit of an idea of who he is. He's one of those people who claimed that Trump was going to win, right, in 2020. And when he was wrong, everybody said, hey, check that out. You were wrong. Looks like Biden won. That means I was correct because I predicted that Biden would win. So I'm the prophet here in this situation. Isn't everybody in government there because God put them there? Isn't that what like Roman says or whatever? It says that the government leaders are there because God put them there, basically. So now let's listen to Andrew Womack try to weasel his way out of that one. I heard a leader in the body of Christ say that God sovereignly puts in the president. As Romans says, yes, that's correct. And so if, if Biden winds up being the one, then God is the one who put him in. And man, I just hate that. I disagree with that 1,000%. By the way, this was immediately after the election ended, and Biden had won the election. So it was mid-November 2020 when this clip came out, I believe. Anyway, Biden had not been inaugurated yet, and I guess Trump believed that there was still an opportunity to end democracy in the U.S. I agree with that 1,000%. And let me just give you one scripture that if you believe the Bible, it disproves that. And that's Hosea chapter 8, verse 4, and it says, and that Hold on. It's Hosea. Why are we reading from Hosea? The Bible, as a matter of fact, I have one right here. It's what I keep my water bottle on. Yeah, I just put my water bottle right here. It's a good water bottle holder. Anyway, the Old Testament has a total of 12 minor prophets is what they're called. So we've got 1 Kings, 2 Kings, and then we've got the Chronicles, and... Those are the story about David rising to power and taking control and Solomon and everything else. Then we have like the minor prophets, people like Hosea, Jonah was a minor prophet, uh, Malachi, Zechariah, Zephaniah, so on and so forth. They're minor prophets. And the minor prophets basically are there to prophesy when a uh, harvest has gone really, really poorly and say... God will fix the harvest next year if you blah, blah, blah. If you do this thing or that thing for him, if you sacrifice two cats and a goat or something, then he'll fix the harvest for you. That, that's the kind of thing they were doing back then. The minor prophets are not meant for modern day prophet, uh, prophetic interpretations. The prophetic interpretation was provided at the time by the prophet. Quick note before we continue, I want to let you know I just wrote a book. If you want to check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. It's a book about my experiences within Jehovah's Witnesses. It's completely understandable if you know nothing about Jehovah's Witnesses. And if you're a Christian, it's a good reference to use for why Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong about their interpretation of the Bible. The last chapter of the book is 100 questions that I have for the governing body. I'm selling the last chapter separately as its own separate guide, if you guys want to get that too. So check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. I'd appreciate that. So he's going all the way back to Hosea, to Jewish literature. I'm not sure why we're looking at Jewish literature 
instead of Christian literature, but okay, go on. And it says, and they have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. I mean, okay, so he picked out some random verse from some random book, from some random minor prophet from the Old Testament that said something like, in this one specific case, God hadn't picked the king. And he's using that as the basis to claim that Romans, the, you know, the Christian verses in Romans, I think Romans 13, are completely invalidated. Is it Romans 13? I got to look it up. Hold on. All right. Romans 13. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. There you go. That's what Roman, Romans 13, 1. So this guy has to go all the way back to Hosea, a minor prophet from the Old Testament, the old Jewish literature, to find a verse that, out of context, invalidates the Christian literature. Good job there, uh, Andrew. Fantastic work. Do it not. I mean, right there, the Lord just clearly says that I wasn't a part of you putting this king in. I'm not the one who put that prince there. God doesn't put people in who are going to kill and expand the killing of babies by the millions. Even. Okay, that's not what's happening, first of all. And second, God is in favor of abortion. Numbers 5, 11 to 22. He wants people to get abortions in some cases. It's mandated. You know why? It's important to maintain male lineages in the Bible. If you weren't sure who your wife was with, then you should get an abortion in the Bible. Just to be sure, just so that you know that it's definitely your kid, that kind of thing. Numbers 5, 11 to 22. Just give that a read if you're curious. So this whole expand the killing of babies thing. And expand the killing of babies. Uh, that's not what's happening. But if that, wa if that is what's happening, you know, with the, the abortion or whatever, God would be all for it, as a matter of fact. By the millions, even babies that have been born alive. You guys catch that one? One more time. Listen to the whole thing in context. God doesn't put people in who are going to kill and expand the killing of babies by the millions, even babies that have been born alive. Babies who've been born alive are being killed. This is the old myth of post-birth abortion. Quick interjection, this won't take long. If you like what I do, I'd appreciate it if you watch the video to the end. YouTube bases video reach off of watch time, so watching even an extra minute makes the video go further. Liking and subscribing goes a long way too. Finally, it would be awesome if you guys checked out my Patreon. All links are in the description, of course. Okay, back to the video. This doesn't exist. Nobody's advocating for it. Nobody has ever advocated for it. I don't know a single person who says that this should be possible to do, this should be allowed, or this whatever. This is a fabrication in the mind of scared right-wing nutbags. That is it. Do you know another name for post-birth abortion? It's called murder. You're murdering somebody at that point, okay? There's no such thing. But we have Andrew Womack here to find esoteric little verses for us from the Old Testament for minor prophets to invalidate modern or to invalidate more modern Christian literature and to tell us that God doesn't like abortion when in fact he he absolutely does. So great. Thank you for the information there, Andrew. He's not the one putting in people that are pushing the LGBTQ uh, agenda. Wait, what? Why did what did Jesus say about it? Did Jesus say anything about being gay? Did Jesus have a problem with trans people at all? I'm trying to remember. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think Jesus said a God <laughs> word about it, as a matter of fact. No, he didn't. And for what it's worth, the verses in the New Testament, all right, the, the verses in the Old Testament are invalidated because it was Leviticus 18 and 20. That's the Mosaic law, the old law. We don't follow that anymore because Jesus fulfilled the old law. When he died, he said, he didn't come to end it, but to fulfill it. He fulfilled it. That's why we eat shellfish. That's why we eat pork. That's why we wear cotton and linen blends, so on and so forth. So Leviticus 18 and 20 are invalidated. Genesis 19, I think, was the third verse in the Old Testament that even mentioned it. Okay, we've got 32,000 verses in the entire Bible 
and we have six that are anti-gay to any degree. The two in Leviticus are invalidated. The one in Genesis is about Sodom and Gomorrah, and actually, Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed for their ill treatment of the poor, not because of gay activity. That had nothing to do with the destruction. The other three verses in the Bible are New Testament. We got a verse in one of the Timothys, one of the Corinthians, and in Romans. The one that people grapple with the most is in Romans, but all of the all three of the verses weren't talking about what we understand today as gay marriage, as long term gay relationships. They were talking about being the passive participant in a prostitution situation and also pederasty where an older man would take a younger boy as his pupil and do terrible things that's what was being condemned and it was largely being condemned because he thought that paul thought it made the church look bad so anyway jesus said nothing about it Paul only mentioned it in passing and only in certain circumstances and only because it was he was afraid it would make the church look bad. All the stuff in the Old Testament, irrelevant, thrown out. And don't try to tell me that there weren't gay people back then. Uh, you know, back in Jesus' day and in Abraham and Isaac and, you know, Jacob's day and all that. There were absolutely gay people around then, too. Now, I love how this guy finds, out of 32,000 verses finds the three verses in the New Testament that back up his political position, anti-gay marriage. Yeah, good job cherry-picking the hell out of that Bible. I don't know anybody who could do it better. Expand the killing of babies by the millions, even babies that have been born alive. He's not the one putting in people that are pushing the LGBTQ uh, agenda and... I'm sorry, Romans 13.1 simply disagrees with you, good sir. Causing social upheaval. He's not the one that's putting in people that are going to socialize everything and radicalize it. That okay, you do realize that Jesus was like a socialist, right? Are we on the same page about that one? I can't even believe this dude is, like brought the word socialism up in a negative context when talking about the Bible. That kind of blows me away, but okay. All right, so now you have an idea of who Andrew Womack is and why he believes that God absolutely did not choose Joe Biden. Now listen to Hank Kuhneman, another failed prophet of God, claiming to prophesy that Donald Trump would absolutely win the 2020 election. Listen to him justify the idea that God didn't put Biden into power. He wanted Trump, but he's I, apparently just not powerful enough for it. Uh, by the way, this clip from Hank Kuhneman is from mid-May 2021. It's about uh, five months after inauguration. Somebody had released recently about how there were some uh, prophetic ministers that uh, supposedly had a dream that uh, the, the B guy uh, would... Why does he just say Biden? ...win and 45 would lose, and they are accurate prophets. No, they aren't. Uh, yes, they are. Joe Biden is in office. Donald Trump is not. What do you call that? If not accurate, that's what happened. Because he won. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you can call it whatever you want and that they had the skinny beforehand, but the truth of the matter is he won. Dude, these people are shameless. They are absolutely shameless. That is how people like Andrew Womack and Hank Kuhneman and other prophets justified failing their prophecies, claiming something happened when it absolutely didn't. Now that you have an idea of who Andrew Womack is, let's talk about this more recent clip. This one is from early February 2024. He's doing this call-in thing with Gene Bailey. I think they're on Flashpoint, or maybe they were on Andrew's show with the Flashpoint guest. But anyway, they're both on the Victory Channel, which is Kenneth Copeland's network. How can we use your declaration of our dependence on God as our declaration of independence and use the Bible as a constitution and have a, I don't know what you'd want to call it, a grace revolution, but a new, a new, uh, a new, you know, do it again. So what she just said, the caller, she basically just said, how do we use, how do we institute the Bible? How do we set it up so that the Bible is used as our new constitution and how do we 
set up your declaration as our new declaration of independence does she i guess she's saying she wants to like break off from the united states right or does she just like does she want to take the united states with her and force everybody else out i don't know you know molly i don't believe we need to come up with a new constitution the one we have is fine the problem is people aren't following it our constitution i mean if you were to put it how do we have how can we have another american revolution is the chiron at the bottom molly from virginia wow if you were to put it into biblical terms if they were still writing the bible today i believe that the american constitution and the founding of this nation would be in scripture as one of the great things that god has done okay i guess he thinks god created the uh, constitution so there's nothing wrong with our constitution it's the fact that we aren't following it and you know i've like, how are we not following the Constitution? What the hell are you even talking about? I don't understand. And, you know, I've dealt with this before. I've actually told people that if Trump gets back in, there are people that are saying that they will physically fight. They, right. We've seen riots in the streets, you know, back during the 2020 and the George Floyd and uh, riots and all these things. Uh, just completely fabricated. Complete fabricated nonsense. The George Floyd protests were not riots they weren't attacks on the fundamental democracy that we live in the way that january 6th was which is complete nonsense it's like people saying after george floyd new york city is destroyed oh no i mean i live in new york city it's still here it's fine everything's good i mean there are protests around every now and then for like palestine or whatever and the protests march from one end of Manhattan Island to the other, and then everybody goes home. It, like there's no, no one is boarding up their windows, living in fear they're going to be destroyed or any of that other nonsense. It's people just live in another reality. It's like they've never been to another city in their life or been to a city at all, so they think that they can make like any claim they want about it. These things, and I've actually had people say, say that if. Trump was to be elected, if we got a conservative Congress, that they fear that we would have another uh, civil war. And you know what? I don't want a civil war. I don't know anybody that does. But would it be worth it to turn this nation back? I believe it would. That is disturbing, dude. That is as disturbing as it gets. You know, when you talk to veterans about this, when you talk to people who have been in war and actually seen some of the things that come out of war you know when you talk to like a combat medic who had to amputate somebody's leg on the spot immediately or they were gonna die they know what war brings and nobody wants it nobody wants it veterans generally will do anything to avoid war surprisingly andrew womack is a veteran he had this conversation with a dude named Doug Frank. He works closely with Mike Lindell to undermine election integrity, as Lindell does, you know. Listen to what Doug Frank had to say to Andrew Womack about civil war. And we have whistleblowers that we also have people in America that are traitors that cooperated with this to get the ends that they wanted. Just completely made up. Like, no, there wasn't, like an American collaborator trying to prevent Trump from winning, and that's why he lost. Like, it's absurd. So it's not just foreign actors. We've got some bad actors in our own country, and frankly, they're traitors, and they deserve a traitor's treatment. I.E. hung. If you can prove this, are Which he can't. people going to yes. be guilty of treason? Is there going to be jail time or repercussions for them? Yes, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we have some real traitors. And I, I talk to a lot of veterans these days, and they're, you know, they, they're the guys who have been in the field and seen their buddies die in the field. Um, I've been right there. You, you're a vet as well. I am. Are you, are you just going to roll over and let the liberty that your buddies died for just I'm go not. to waste? <laughs> no. no way. And, 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 and that's what I think is happening. You know, as people are waking up, especially our vets, they're saying, hey, my oath is a lifetime oath. I, you know, I'm still going to serve my country. I think people are rising up and, and they're not going to just be happy with, well, let's just slap that guy in the wrist. No way. That person's a traitor. And, you know, my buddies died for less than that. So I think, I think it's going to be 
I think there's going to be some pretty stiff consequences coming up. That is super disturbing, man. Andrew Womack has been in a war. He has been in a war and allegedly seen his friend die next to him and wants that again for the United States, apparently. What is wrong with this guy? What is going through his head? Is there anything going through that head? That is about as disturbing as it gets. Okay, now I told you we were going to watch some clips that were banned previously. Let's watch some banned clips, shall we? This one is from late April 2020. It's about two months or a month and a half or so after COVID really started being taken seriously in the United States. Cases were popping up everywhere, every single state, and the news is talking about everyone is kind of freaking out. Stock market plummets. And everyone's staying inside. We don't know if it can be carried in on our groceries or or if it's going to cause permanent brain damage or what. Like, we had no idea. We didn't know. That's the phase we were in when Andrew Womack comes out here and releases this video. See, when you put things into perspective, it changes. And these other pandemics that happen, you know, I I remember uh, the swine flu in 1918. I studied about it. He studied about the swine flu in 1918, okay? Something tells me that he didn't, because that was the Spanish flu in 1918, and the swine flu was in 2012? Uh, 2009, sorry. April 2009 is when the swine flu came around. It's H1N1 influenza virus, and it was very, very bad. It was killing a lot of people. It was making them really, really sick. But this guy studied the swine flu in 1918. Okay, go on. You know, I I remember uh, the swine flu in 1918. I studied about it. And 95% of the people who got the swine flu died. Okay, I get like, I don't think that's correct. I don't think anything he says here is correct, but okay. Again, I'm still not even sure. Is he talking about the swine flu or the Spanish flu? Swine flu death rate or mortality rate. Uh, I think it killed 0.01 to 0.03% of those infected. The swine flu did, I believe, if I'm reading this correctly. I I might not be, Uh, which is not nothing. That's still serious. You know, if 200 million people catch this condition, this this virus, you know, we're looking at like 600,000 deaths still. That's a lot. That's not nothing. And the Spanish flu in 1918 had a fatality rate of 2 to 3%. Holy Christ, that's a lot. My God, dude. It, I mean, COVID's numbers were um, 0.06%. That's COVID's mortality rate, 0.06% as of 2022. Swine flu was 0.03%, H1N1. That was 09. And the mortality rate of the Spanish flu in 1918 was between 2 and 3%, as far as I can tell. Those are the numbers. So let, let's listen to what he says here one more time with all of that information in mind. See, when you put things into perspective... It changes. And these other pandemics that happen, you know, I, I remember uh, the swine flu in 1918. I no, he doesn't. studied about it. And 95% of the people who got the swine flu died. No. The mortality rate was 0.03% of swine flu, between 2 and 3% of Spanish flu, and 0.06% for COVID. Now it's less than 5%, somewhere around 1% for the coronavirus if you include all of the people that don't have the symptoms. Sure, yes, great, fine. It's less than 1%. Do you have any idea how many people that is? Uh, Just pull up a uh, calculator here. Do you know how many people have not had COVID in the United States? It's almost like winning the lottery at this point to have not caught COVID at one time or another. So we'll say 300 million people, right? Times 0.06%. I think, wait, what is that? Is that 1.8 million? Yeah, I think it's 1.8 million people. I could be doing my numbers wrong here. I think it's 1.8 million people is how many it kills. Who cares though, right? 
Not a big deal. It's less than 1%. You'll be fine. Nobody cares. Like, what is wrong with this guy? What happened to the value of human life? Of all human life? Around 1% for the mm -hmm. coronavirus, if you include all of the people that don't have the symptoms. It's relatively insignificant. No, it still kills millions of people and has killed millions of people. Looking back at this now, I mean, we're years out from when he said this originally. This is just disgusting, dude. This is grotesque and evil and wrong. But it gets worse if you can believe it. Andrew Womack said even more disgusting stuff about COVID. Again, another banned video right here for a while. This one was from uh, 2020. I just have this down as 2020. So early 2020, presumably. And we were promised that no sickness would even come nigh our dwelling. And Daniel, something I've been studying just in the last couple of days mm -hmm. based... Oh, God. that The scariest words you can hear a Christian say, I've been studying the book of Daniel. <laughs> uh, so much garbage. Like, look, the angels interpreted the prophecies from the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, you have no reason to be interpreting anything from Daniel. But, okay, I digress. Let's keep listening. So he's, he's reading the book of Daniel. Go on. Something I've been studying just in the last couple of days mm -hmm. based on all of this was Exodus 23, 25. And that verse says that you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall take all, take away all sickness, from take you. all sickness away from the midst of thee. Mm -hmm. And I looked up those words in the Hebrew and the word take and away, the word on either side of sickness, it literally means to turn off. I seriously doubt it, but... You understand what he's saying here, right? He's saying based on some book or some uh, verse in the book of Exodus, God is going to disable Christians' ability to catch COVID. Christians will uniquely be safe from COVID infection. That's what he was saying. How depraved is that? Seriously. Millions of people listening to this guy. Kenneth Copeland Network word on either side of sickness, it literally means to turn off. Wow. He will turn off sickness, and it was put in there twice just to emphasize that, you know, whatever receptors you have in your body that mm -hmm. make you receptive mm -hmm. to sickness, he'll turn it off. That's awesome. That's just wrong, man. And of course, now we know years down the line that Christians didn't have any better or worse outcomes than anyone else. In fact, if anything, they had worse outcomes because they had people like this telling them that they'd be perfectly safe. I, that's awesome. That's a so great revelation. I've got all of that on our website. You can go study those things. He says that's a great revelation. That is disgusting, dude. So God apparently gave him this, this secret information. This is just wrong. Here's another one. Another... Previously banned video from YouTube. God, I hope they don't take this down for misinformation. <laughs> they might still. I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, I'm debunking it, so I think it's okay. This is July 2nd, 2020. Six months. Six whole months after COVID came around and wreaked havoc on society. Listen to this one. Did you know if you get tested for the COVID-19 virus, if you've had a flu shot, then... You test positive. No, that is completely false. It was false then and it's false now. The flu and the corona all right, the influenza virus and the coronavirus are two completely different things, not similar in any way. Okay, this is six months later. There is no excuse for this. When you have an audience, you need especially an audience of religious nutcases who will do anything for you. Anything. You need to be more responsible with the things you say. This is just wrong. Then you test positive. If you've had a cold, you test positive. If False. You've had the flu because all of those things are COVID. COVID. No, 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 no. It's false. My God. I can't get through two words without like debunking what he's saying here. If you've had a cold, you test positive. If you've had the flu, because all of those things are COVID. COVID-19 is the 19th different COVID virus, a cold, the common. COVID is the 19th virus. That's why it's COVID-19. So there was previously COVID-18, 17, 16. 
we had COVID nine the other day. Hell, um, back in nineteen twenty, there was COVID three. Apparently, this dude is a joke. This is six months later. There's no excuse for this. None. Common cold is a COVID virus. The flu is a COVID virus. And so anyway, there's no, no, they're not. COVID is the illness that arises from being infected with SAR, with SARS-CoV-2, I believe is what it's called. And SARS-CoV-2 is a coronavirus. And the reason it's called a coronavirus is because it has a crown shape on it. That's what the word corona means, crown, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it means crown. Just want to clarify that. The coronavirus had a crown shape on it. Now, the influenza virus is completely different. And he mentioned the common cold. There are a variety of different viruses that cause the cold, the common cold. There are rhinoviruses. And yes, some are coronaviruses. But if you have those coronaviruses, they are different enough from SARS-CoV-2 that they will not trip a test as positive. Even back then, this is absurd. This is absolutely ridiculous and disgusting. Seriously, six months down the line, okay? He should be a lot more careful six months down the line. And so anyway, they're saying that this inflates. Wait, who's they? He says they are saying. Who's, who's they in this equation? Why they're saying that this inflates the numbers. <laughs> they are saying that positive tests as a result of the flu inflates the numbers. Okay. I don't know who's saying that, but I'm starting to wonder if Andrew Womack is like seeing or hearing people in the room with him. Absolutely absurd and disgusting. That guy is terrible. He did nothing but destroy during the uh, like during the pandemic. He had an opportunity to be an okay person, to help people. He had a chance to save people's lives. And what did he do? He got people killed. Good job, Andrew. I hope you're happy with yourself. You know, not for nothing, but today, Andrew Womack is talking smack about, quote unquote, the homosexuals. Oh, my God, dude, just so much disgusting stuff from this guy. Like, I only have so much time to talk about him, but just listen to this one. Homosexuals have like uh, three times as much suicide as heterosexuals, and then you go into transgender and it just continues to go up. It's mm. a very destructive lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a destructive lifestyle, right. Yeah. They have a shorter life expectancy. They have 20 years less that the homosexual lives than a uh, heterosexual. And, you know, uh, cigarettes take an average of seven years off of a person's life. So wow. homosexuality is three times worse than smoking. We ought to put a, a label across their forehead. This could be <laughs> hazardous to your health. You know, I think that speaks for itself, right? This dude is terrible. That isn't even the worst thing, honestly, that I've heard from him, re even recently. I got to go through some of the stuff I heard from him recently and, and clip out some of this stuff because it's bad. It is straight up bad. But what else do you expect from somebody who says stuff like this? A friend of mine in Illinois actually knows a teacher that comes to uh, school as a furry and wears ears and a tail and uses a litter box at the front of the classroom to relieve himself. Uh, did we expect more from him, honestly? Did anybody expect for this guy to be like a bastion of freedom? Tell me what you think about him in the comments. I think he's terrible.